Hey guys, I'm the one you lost. And this is the process for this particular artwork. So once again, you're gonna see me starting with the head. I always like to make sure I got the head perfect before I start drawing the guides for the body. I mainly use rectangles and break it apart in different layers, head, torso, pelvis, and then start to work my way down with the legs. I went for kind of a uh, hands on the hips, like sporty look. This time I wanted to draw the full body because frankly, I don't draw full bodies that often, but this time I did, which is a lot of fun. Trying to get that structure right is super important whenever you're going. Um, use guides always, always, always. I'll make a video at some point breaking down how I do guides for the body, and hopefully that helps out. So I wanted to go with athletic wear, kind of like something sporty while at the same time kind of street fashion. Um, so I went with kind of this baggy um, crop top and then an athletic... Um, what is that called? An athletic uh, pants? Except they aren't pants, they're more of shorts. I should have said shorts, because I'm an idiot. I ended up just copying and pasting the shoes. Um, I don't really recommend that. I was really being lazy, but you know, sometimes we gotta be a little bit lazy. Now I'm drawing the guides for the head to kind of help move it along. Uh, the eyes are very thin this time, so, uh, they're a lot easier to draw when they're thin, but I usually draw big eyes, but this character does not have big eyes. They have very thin, narrow eyes, at least in my rendition of them. Um, when you draw hair, you really want to imagine it in a spherical sense. And whenever you, whenever I draw hair, I particularly like to draw it wild and crazy, just because it's a whole lot of fun to draw it that way. So I drew it long, I drew it wild, and I drew it fun. I really struggled to get the her left leg to really be positioned correctly because you, whenever you draw characters, you want to go for balance. And I usually color my sketches, that way I'm able to kind of plan out the rendering as I go. So yeah, this is the initial idea for the character. I ended up changing some colors down the line and added some like stripes to kind of add some interest to the outfit and then did a multiply layer on top and did some light carving afterwards. I then changed the canvas size because I wanted to draw kind of a behind shot. Um, I don't do that often. In fact, I've only done it one other time. So this was definitely a, a new thing that I was doing again and trying to do it better than I did the previous time. So, kind of just created the outline here, sketched it out, drew the same pants. I ended up not drawing the top because I wanted the back to be a focus. Um, of course, I'm not drawing any actual nudity, so you won't be seeing anything. But uh, that's the basic idea. I then do some light carving to kind of plan out the shadows. There we go. Now you're kind of seeing how I plan the lighting. I zoom out really far when light carving. I'm sorry if that's kind of awkward to view, but that's kind of how I typically do it. Then I add a total curve to kind of plan out the, the lighting overall. I then add the tail, which I almost forgot. That would have been bad. <laughs> Don't forget the tail when drawing characters with tails. It's super important. So now we have the outline and I'm going to start adding details and then Here's the line art. I started off with the large um, focus here first because it's just, it's easy for my brain. It gets me in the mood to do a long drawn out line art because if I'm not in the mood for it, I tend to get lazy and start kind of half-assing the lines, which is not a good idea. So just take your time with lines and try to have fun with them. Line art is super fun for me, but it just takes forever. Um, I find it very relaxing. I've said this many times in my videos, but my recommendation would be learn to enjoy the process of doing line art. If you don't, there are ways to render without doing line art. In fact, I plan to do a video on that very soon. It's going to be a challenge for me because line art kind of helps guide me, but it'll be my first time going in doing, doing it without line art, you know. 
Now we're working on the main full body character. I'm adding details that were missing from the sketch. That is important to do in line art is to add more detail and clean up what detail is actually there. Don't go into it and just copy what's there. The point of line art is improving what's already there and cleaning it up and making it look nice. I've always had that opinion of line art and it tends to make things a little more fun. You don't go one to one with what's there, but you add and improve what has already been drawn. I made the, the shorts kind of fit to the body a bit more, um, add the seam down the middle, which really accentuates the body, so uh, it just do it that way. Um, knees used to be hard for me, but I've since kind of learned how to do them and how to... Legs are hard. Um, I think it's one of those things that a lot of beginners struggle with drawing legs, and I did for a long time too because I didn't have good anatomy in my brain. Um, always have a good reference, always have uh, some anatomy book to look over to kind of make sure you're doing things right. Um, I ended up going really hard on the line art for these eyes, even though I don't really do much for the eyes in this artwork, so I'm not sure why I went so hard on that. So now we're doing the hair. I ended up getting rid of the glasses in the final artwork just because I, I don't know, they, they didn't feel good to me in the artwork. They just kind of took away from it, so I left them out. Um, as per usual, when you're drawing hair, you want to think of it in a spherical sense because it's forming around the head of the character. It's also good to add a lot of drapery in the hair. Always think of hair as a, almost a liquid. Even though that may not make sense, um, liquid takes the form of whatever it touches. If you treat hair like, it's, like it has weight and it's almost a liquid and drapes over everything. That's a really good way to view it, and it'll help you understand how to fit the hair over a character. So again, I'm drawing the hair kind of wild and crazy. Um, lots of overlapping points and curves. I also drew the ears very fuzzy because if it's a cat character, it's more of a panther character, but it's got to be very cute, very flowy, and very fun. So now we're doing the tail, and the tail's not really all that impressive, it's just kind of simple. So now we're adding uh, the colors and the base colors, and the way I do that is I make the background green, that way I can see holes in the artwork. And use the selection pen to kind of help you guide yourself. Um, it's how I've always done it, and I always think it works pretty well. So I wanted to add some color in the shoes because I wanted, um, right now the outfit's kind of plain and I feel like if I make the shoes more interesting and almost match the hair, it adds some interest to the character. I hope uh, you see that too, otherwise it was all for nothing. <laughs> so we're almost done with the base color, so here pretty soon we're going to be uh, rendering. Now it's important to have everything separated in folders. Um, if you want to, you can slow down this video and really take a look at my layers and my folders, and that might help you understand more. Um, I have my color palette to the side. If you would like me to share my color palette, I'm more than welcome to. I'll just have to upload it to, to Google Drive. Just leave a comment saying you want my colors, and I'll be more than happy to give them to you. Kind of drew some shadows here. I always start with the skin. There have been times I start with the eyes, but skin is always more fun for me to render, so I usually do that first. Um, we're now adding shading to the shorts. And I'm sorry if this is going really fast. My, my rendering is super quick, just because I used to uh, practice rendering while watching speed paints, so I ended up developing kind of a fast way of rendering. Uh, as you can see, I used the selection pen and highlighting certain areas to create soft and hard edge gradients. Always, always, always use the selection pen if you want to create a gradient, just because it'll make it more interesting and almost like seamless. Um, I did a 
multiply layer for the hair. I don't always do that, but this time I did. Um, so it all depends. Sometimes I do it because it's kind of a cheating way of doing things, and sometimes I like to cheat. I'm I'm bad like that. God, that that was cringy. <laughs> Keeping it in. Add a multiply layer on top of everything, kind of undo areas where the light touches. Just kind of add some interest. And then color the line art, and now we're going to start adding some post-processing. Add some add glow, make the highlighted areas glow a bit. And so, yeah, kind of create balance with the tonal curve, make it look interesting, add a level correction. And I ended up changing the background to black and the line to uh, white, and that ended up being how it turned out. So if you enjoyed this video, thank you so much. Please like, comment, subscribe, hit the bell. Helps out a whole lot. I'll see you guys next time. Bye.